Hello and welcome to our series of the OECA courses. In this episode, I'm going to introduce Open EULA system services, task management concepts, and configuration methods. Throughout, we will compound this information with the examples to equip you with the ability to manage system services and configure jobs. First, let me ask, what is system D? Well, D indicates daemon, a process running in the background. System D is the Inlux system and service manager, and is compatible with the SysV and LSB initialization scripts. It can manage the activation process and services of a system. The first benefit of system D is its on-demand activation of daemons. There are policies based on daemon processes. During initialization, SysV init activates all the possible background services that might be used and activates all service processes upon user login. This leads to obvious slow system boots and a huge resource waste. Some services may rarely or even never be used during system runtime. For example, Servers rarely caps printing services or access SSHD, so starting these services is unnecessary. SystemD provides on-demand activation. A service can be activated on demand and deactivated when no longer in use. This means SystemD starts only dependent services during system boots, greatly reducing the boot duration. It also performs lifecycle management with C groups. An important role of an init system is to track, the track and manage the lifecycle of service processes and start or stop them freely. However, it is more difficult than you think to encode an init system into stopping services. Service processes often run in the background as demons and sometimes double forth. In upstart, the expect stanza in the configuration file must be correctly configured. Otherwise, upstart cannot learn daemon's PID by counting the number of system call forks. Cgroup is an easy-to-use method for managing system resource quotas. Its file system-like IT is intuitive. So when the parent process creates a child process, the latter inherits all attributes of the C group to which the parent process belongs. This means that all relevant processes are put into the same control group and ensuring system D can find the PIDs of all relevant processes simply by traversing their control group. Its third feature is the mount and auto mount points. Linux systems use the FSTAB file to manage file system mount points, which are automatically mounted at system boot time to hold critical files, such as the home directory. Like sysv init, system D also monitors and manages mount points so that they can be automatically mounted at system boot time. By contrast, system D uses the FSTAB file to manage mount points. There are times when you need to mount or unmount. For example, a temporary mounting point is required to access the DVD content or canceled using the unmount command when the point is no longer needed and resources are to be saved. This is traditionally achieved using the AutoFS service. The system D allows automatic mount without the need to install AutoFS. Another benefit is uh, transactional dependency. System boot involves a host of separate jobs, some of which may be dependent on each other. For example, a network file system can be mounted only after a successful connection to a network. System D can run a large number, but not all of dependent jobs in parallel. For NFS, it is impossible to mount NFS and activate the network at the same time. Before running a job, System D calculates its dependencies, creates a temporary transaction, and verifies that this transaction is consistent. All relevant services 
can be activated without any dependency on each other. Next is its high compatibility with the SysV init scripts. Like Upstart, SystemD introduces new configuration methods and has new requirements for application development. To replace the current initialization system with the SystemD, SystemD must be compatible with the existing program. Needless to say, it is difficult to change service code in a Linux distribution. That's why SystemD is compatible with the SysV and LSV init scripts, which lets you upgrade without any major changes, ensuring it can be more widely accepted by users. The last feature is system snapshots and restoration. The system state is constantly changing due to the starting and closing of services. SystemD can temporarily save the current state of your operating system or restore your OS to a previous state from a dynamically created snapshot. Assume a snapshot is created while services A and B are running. If service A is stopped and some system changes, such as the activation of service C, are applied, the snapshot lets you return your operating system to the earlier state when only services A and B were running. SystemD supports socket activation using units and bus activation using deep bus files. The activation and monitoring system of SystemD is based on units. A unit is a resource that enables system operation and management. These resources are defined by configuration files, also called unit files. There are many types of units, such as the service unit that describes how to manage a service or an application on the server, including how to activate or terminate the service. Other units include target units, auto-mounted units, device units, and more. This table lists all available SystemD unit types and their storage paths. Next, let's see how SystemD manage services. The system control commands support basic operations like start, stop, restart, view, enable, and disable system services. This command is similar to the sysvinit command. Though systemd system control ensures better parallelism. This table compares the two commands. For example, to start a service, the sysvinit command is service plus service name plus start. But the systemd command is sysmcontrol plus start plus service name dot service. To query services running in the system, we can use sysmcontrol list units type service. To view all services regardless of whether they are loaded, add all to the end of the command line. The command output is shown on the screen. To view the running status of a specific service, run system control status name dot service. Here is an example to query the status of gdm dot service. In the command output, loaded indicates a service has been loaded. The command line also displays whether the corresponding absolute path is started. If it's started, enabled is displayed. Active indicates whether the service is running. If the service is running, running and the time when the service starts to run are displayed. Main PID indicates the process ID, that is, the PID of the service. C group indicates other information about C group. Run system control is active name dot service to check whether a service is running. The command output will be either active or inactive. Run system is enabled name dot service to check whether the system is enabled. For example, enabled means a service has been permanently enabled while enabled runtime means the service has been temporarily enabled. To run a service, run system control start name dot service as the root user. For example, 
to start the HTTPD service. Run system control start HTTPD dot service. To stop a service, run system control stop name dot service as the root user. For example, to stop the Bluetooth service, run system control stop Bluetooth dot service. To restart a service, run system control restart name dot service as the root user. For example, to restart the Bluetooth service, run system control restart Bluetooth dot service. Note that this command stops the selected service and immediately starts it again, or starts a selected service that is not running. To enable a service during startup, run system control enable name dot service as the root user. For example, to set the HTTPD service to start automatically at system boot, run system control enable HTTPD dot service. To disable a service running during startup, run system control disable name dot service as the root user. For example, to prevent the Bluetooth service from starting automatically at system boot time, run system control disable Bluetooth dot service. Although some Linux system commands are still available in system D or for compatibility reasons, you are advised to use system control to shut down, restart, and hibernate a system. This table lists the mapping relationship. To shut down and power off a system, run system control power off as the root user. To shut down the system without powering it off, run system control hot as the root user. To restart the operating system, run system control reboot as the root user. After any of the preceding commands are executed, a message is sent to all login users. If you do not want to want the system D to send the message at the no war parameter. To suspend the system, run system control suspend as the root user. To hibernate the system, run system control hibernate as the root user. To suspend and hibernate the system, run system control hibernate sleep as the root user. For flexibility purposes, the concept of the run levels is replaced with the system D targets. You can inherit an existing target and turn it into your own target by adding other services. This table provides a complete list of the run levels and their corresponding system D targets. Well, this concludes today's course. We hope you found this useful. And if you did, remember to follow us on our socials. Remember to join us in our community discussions or contact us if you have any questions. Thank you for watching and see you next time.